Hello, welcome RC Shim in the hangar. Today I will present you batteries for the 7 inch long range copter I got like two months ago. I invested a lot of time in researching what would be the best packs to give me the most flight time or the best performance or whatever I need at the moment. And I collected a hell of a lot of data and I learned a lot of stuff about lithium ion packs because they are lightweight and have a lot of milliamps in them so you can fly longer. But they also come with a price and I will show you the price in this video. So let's roll the intro. So I still really like the Chimera 7. There are a few copters out there but yeah this is one of the outstanding ones in the 7 inch class. First of all I have a huge list of all the packs that I researched in an Excel spreadsheet with the price, with links, with everything so you can take a good look at this if you are searching a battery. And the first packs that I quickly ordered of Hobby King are those Sippies. So the Sippy is not too expensive, it was good available in Europe, that was the reason why I bought it. But it's way too heavy. It's even 10% heavier than advertised. 660 grams. This is on the ceiling of what uh, you want to carry as battery weight on the Chimera 7. I mean, there are guys flying with 800 grams, but that's really too much and it flies like a bus then. Yeah, 400, 450 would be really cool. I also got a 2200 milliamp scout around the location pack, a warm up pack. Banggood sent me this, Kodar. Sounds like cheese, but it's it's cool. This is my only 5S pack, 5 cell, but it's a Lipo HV, so it's 4.35 volts and not 4.2 volts charged. So you have one cell less, but you have higher cell voltages. And the interesting thing is, this compares really, really good to a lithium ion pack because lithium ion pack they have six cells but their voltage drops rather quickly in the middle of the flight the voltages will be quite similar because the lithium high volt holds its storage really cool and the lithium ion sags more of course you feel it is a little less powerful so for example if i want to chase an rc body on the field cannot go as fast as with the six cell packs I also found out, and I found this out because TJ, shout out, uh, gave me this tip. The LiPo HV, high volt, they have a better weight to power ratio than normal LiPos. But will they live as long? Um, what, what experience do you guys have with the longevity of the high volt packs? This boy here was also supplied by Banggood. Thanks again, Banggood. Sop Power. <laughs> Did you even hear of this brand? It's a 2800 milliamp pack, 387 grams. For a LiPo, it sags way too much. And around halfway through the milliamps, so like 1400 milliamps, it sagged so much that it gave me the red voltage warning in the OSD. Stay away from these. And last but not least, a naked lithium ion pack. So these were supplied by Farin Frames, an Italian shop. And they are really, really cheap. So they are the budget option with good cells. They might be a really cool tip for you. And I hope they are on stock again when I uh, publish this video. The important thing here is it's a Modicel P42A. Those are the good cells. And they are rated for 45 amps of continuous discharge rate. They will get hot if you draw 45 amps out of them all the time. But that being said, on average, on all my Chimera 7 flights, I used 15 to 16 amps. Sure, there are spikes to 25 or 30 amps. If you don't fancy spot weld them yourself, then Farin Frames is a good source for lithium ion packs. And how do they compare? As I said, 660 gram is too heavy for what this pack delivers. But on the other side, I could fly it quite fast with these packs, had good voltage all around. So it's a good value for the money pack. It's just a bit too heavy. So it doesn't feel too, too sporty with it. 
The five cell pack here is really, really lightweight with 405 grams, where it still has 4000 milliamps. But uh, don't confuse, that's not the same amount of power because milliamps times uh, volts is the milliwatt that you have in it. So this is, uh, yeah, one sixth less of power than this pack here. Say this is like maximum, say 60 amps, like half of what they say is true because they sag a lot. So they are terrible. Uh, the little rhinos are not too bad. 360 grams is under 400, it's nice, but they only have like 2200 milliamps, a bit, a bit in the lower side. The lithium ion pack, 428 grams, still very, very lightweight. 4000 milliamps, 6 cell pack, only 45 amps, but that should be enough for us. What I still need to find out in a proper test is the heat that is generated on these stripes. So this is the critical part of the pack. If too many amps have to run through those nickel stripes, then this will get hot. And if it gets too hot, it will actually melt the shrink wrap away. And this could be a problem. So if I had to choose only one of these packs, I would still go with the lithium ion because I am the cruiser. I want to go long range and I want to have a reserve in my tank and the lithium ion gives me this. If you are a fast flyer, if you want to chase planes or stuff like this, you should go for a lithium polymer, a lipo with high volts, but probably a six cell one. There are a few key values of the lithium ion packs that are important. Firstly, as I mentioned, Molicell P42A are currently the best 21700 cells. They can give you like 45 amps, which is good. For the stripes, most guys use the nickel because they are easier to spot weld. Copper would be better, but it's harder to like, you cannot easily do it in a DIY. You need quite expensive equipment for this. So they are around 12 grams worth of packaging. Without the protection, it is 416 grams. And else you just see that they are hot glued together, the cells. These here are pure nickel stripes. They are one centimeter by three centimeters and they are ultra thin. So there's only that much amount of amperage that can uh, travel to the conductivity of these nickel stripes. Copper stripes would be better. But nonetheless, I found the performance of these packs quite good while flying with them. And now I will wrap them up again and later I will also wrap up this review. I'm sorry for in frames for making such an ugly pack out of it. But yeah, the most important thing is it's protected again. So that's after five minutes of really 20 plus amps drawn, 47 degrees. I think you can actually get away with these nickel stripes. It's comfortably warm, so nothing that would make me really concerned. So I, I wouldn't fly like this on a normal like cruise mission that I prefer to do the most with the Chimera. It was, yeah, for sure like 50% more speed than I would normally cruise at. 
And while flying, I, I mean, I can maybe I can overlay a curve now of the amp draw that I had, if the locking worked. It was 20, 20 plus. On rare occasions, it was 30 amps, but most of the time, it was around 20 amps. And on a normal flight, I would be averaged at 15 amps. And then the pack stays, yeah, below this temp, of course. So back to the studio. So sorry, a lot of specs in this video. As I said, there is an Excel spreadsheet down with an overview of all the packs that I've tested and that I even considered. So it's like 50 plus packs that could be useful. Please do me one favor. If you liked the content of this video, uh, subscribe to this channel if you aren't, or even consider checking out my Patreon page. There you can directly support me. I do not use any affiliate links, so I will not fool you into buying products that I would earn money with. I just give you honest opinions about my findings. And uh, if more guys check out my Patreon page, that makes me just uh, more independent. Uh, I can buy stuff myself and test them and show you my results. So this is the course that I want to go with this channel. Thanks a lot for supporting this idea. Let me know what uh, your experience is with battery packs for 7-inch long-range drones. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.